Behold the triple nickel timer chip, a venerable and venerated, robust, versatile IC, and yet it has one fatal flaw. Unfortunately, the triple nickel, like all its silicon brethren, is unable to withstand even the slightest static discharge. One tiny spark is all it took to kill this bug. Gentlemen, welcome back to the wife's sewing room. I got an upgrade to show you. Of course, the better half was getting tired of looking at my beat up laminated wood glue and toilet paper IKEA desk, and also the boxes of assorted electronical sundries. But what really broke the camel's back was the constant stepping on stray resistors and little LED tabs. So we saddled up the horses and went to the big shitty to replace the old beat up desk with a brand new cheap IKEA laminated wood glue and toilet paper desk. And now that the better half sewing room is all cutesied up, everything in its place and a place for everything, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of a little problem that I've been avoiding and that is static discharge. Of course, the new desks don't have suitable work surfaces for actual work. Uh, interesting etymology, veneer in Scandahoovian actually means onion skin paper. And that is what they surface their desks with. The easy and sensible way to protect the ICs while you're working on them is to use a static dissipative mat. Uh, however, I prefer the difficult and ill-advised way, which is providing a low impedance path to ground and ESD matting being rubber off gases the offshore stank. It fades in sunlight and is unpleasant tactile. Lee. I've decided to eschew conventional wisdom and go with a conductive work surface. Copper. Because copper. So I uh, pulled out the most dangerous tool on the claim here. I'm gonna cut it with a knife. Always remember to cut towards your chum, not your thumb. I got my extruded aluminum flat bar here as a guide. Nice straight edge. And we'll take her slow, do about 200 passes and it'll cut right through. We're gonna use one of the major drawbacks of copper to our advantage in that copper work hardens. So old pipes and electrical connections, lugs, will break off unexpectedly because it's old and it's work hardened. But in this case, it's gonna help us out because we've scored the line now when we bend it, it's gonna work hard and we'll bend it back, it'll break right off like a piece of glass. Ta-da! Now I know myself, and I this may come as a shock to you, but I am more bold than ballerina, so I'm not gonna put another plastic work surface on here or even rubberized silicone or whatever because uh, I know it's not gonna last. But for do you that, that, my son, is so the glue chooch is better. Ditto for the top wise bottom. Now gentlemen, as you're acutely aware, the Viennese ball season is upon us, so you gotta wear your gloves because this is such a good adhesive that you basically got to grow another layer of skin before it disappears. You don't want to embarrass your wife. Now we just clamp her down and go for supper. Today is tomorrow and I let the glue chooch overnight, but I'm not sure it's actually going to work because I didn't have enough glue, enough adhesive to actually do the job properly, and I had to get creative with the clamping. Regular viewers will recognize I'm no stranger to failure because I challenge myself, but occasionally some smarmy know-it-all do-nothing stumbles across the channel and has something nasty to say about me posting a video of a failure. But if you've built anything at all, you know things very seldom go according to plan. So we're gonna pull this off, and see what we got. The proof in the pudding's in the eating. Here comes the moment of tooth. Ah, uh, some weevil wobbles. 
up in there. I had a nice look at it and chalk it up to rookie mistake, but there's some visual distortions because it doesn't lie perfectly flat for whatever reason. So we're gonna break this up visually by hand burnishing. about a fifth of the way there and my wrist is already on fire. Strictly technically speaking, I would have been better off, it would have been cheaper to get some crappy ESD silicone matting and stink up the house and have it burn and yada yada yada. But I gotta say, this is awesome. I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. It's skookum. It's got some soul, man. And it's gonna last me a long, long time. Now I also, while I was at it, I upgraded the vise. Uh, I didn't like the uh, pan of vise, the little plastic one, so I bought the metal one. It's really no better. But you know, it is more expensive and it's interchangeable with, uh, I guess, a fly tying vice if I ever decide to go fishing again. So thanks a lot for watching. Keep your stick on the ice.